Hey, are you a graphic designer and you're struggling and hating what you're doing for a living? Well, today's video is gonna talk about that. I wanna help you overcome that. Graphic design is a great career. You can make great money, you have great freedom, you can travel all over the world, but it doesn't come without its challenges. So today, we're gonna to talk about the five challenges that you're going to face as a graphic designer. You need to be aware of these if you wanna become a graphic designer, and if you are a graphic designer and you're struggling with these, you need to be made aware of these as well. So today we're gonna to talk about that, we're gonna have some fun. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. What's up guys, welcome back to another Adrian Graphics and Marketing video. I'm Adrian Boysell, CEO of Adrian Graphics LLC. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Before we jump into it, if I could please have you guys hit that like button so YouTube shows more of our content. We've had a lot of success lately and that's because of you guys. So if you could please do that, hit that like button and make sure that if you're not subscribed to do that because that's for you to make sure that you get notified whenever we put out a new video. So as I told you in the beginning of this video, today's video is about the five reasons why you will hate your life as a graphic designer. And these are very important. These are areas of your business. These are areas that I've struggled with areas that many designers have struggled with. So I wanted to make a video about it to help you kind of understand them better, put it into my perspective and for my story so that you can help understand it from my area. Okay, so number one is burnout. If you're feeling burnt out as a graphic designer, there's a number of reasons. I have felt burnt out on a number of occasions throughout my career and it's because of these specific things. Number one, I wasn't getting enough sleep. I had so much work on my plate and I was taking so much on that I wasn't able to keep up with it. And because I had these deadlines that I was trying to keep up with and not miss, it caused me to feel overworked, overwhelmed, and I was working till one, two in the morning and sometimes pulling all-nighters. You're burning the candle at both ends. You just can't do that. You will burn yourself out. You're only a person, a human being, and you have limitations. So you need to get proper rest. You need to get inspired. You need to surround yourself with other designers and other community. That's why the Instagraphics Pro Network is so important because it's gonna help you stay recharged, inspired, and motivated. Being burnt out is because you're just not setting yourself up. You don't have the right balance. Okay, number two is defending your work. I wanna tell you this. There is no such thing as bad clients, only bad prospects. If you don't set the expectations right with the client from the beginning, you're going to struggle with them throughout the rest of your time that you have them as a client. So it's important that you set this, those expectations up front and that you let them know, hey, I am an expert at what I do, I love what I do, I'm passionate about what I do, I know what I'm doing. You should not ever have to defend your work. If the client doesn't like your work and they're giving you a hard time about it, oh, I don't like this and I don't like that, it's very simple. Refund their money and move on to the next client. Not everybody's gonna be a good fit for you. Having to constantly defend your work against somebody that's saying, oh, I don't like the way you did this and I don't like the way you did that. They need to go find somebody that's gonna be an order taker, not a creative. A creative should have some free reign to be able to create what he thinks or she thinks is a great idea. Doesn't mean that the client doesn't get their input. It's very important that you let them have their input, but you should be able to expand upon that using your creative gifts to make that even better. So it's important that you understand that. Now, number three is having your profession disrespected. And this really goes hand in hand with number two. I have had on multiple occasions, clients say, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that logo design, or I could just go get this done. If you talk to somebody on the phone for the first time and they say, well, I was thinking about going on Fiverr, or I was thinking about paying 99 designs, and they try to belittle what you're doing and disrespect your profession by comparing you to somebody overseas or somebody who really doesn't care about them at all, then that's the kind of client that you need to walk away from. Or you set the expectation and say, hey, look, that's not acceptable. If you wanna get a $5 logo guy or a $99 logo guy, that's great, that works for you, but that doesn't work for me. I take pride in what I do, I care about what I do, I serve my clients, I meet my deadlines, and I, over, I always exceed the expectations, which leads me to number four, and that's missing deadlines. This is something that I have had happen to me on multiple occasions, especially when I've had to rely on other people. And this is another area that actually you should be focused in on, because if you're feeling burnt out, going back to number one, you should actually be able to have somebody that you can start delegating some of that work to if you're feeling overwhelmed. Have a, somebody that you can collaborate with, somebody you know is gonna do really great work, but you also don't want to miss deadlines. Deadlines are really, really important. If you make a commitment, you need to over-deliver on that commitment, not under-deliver. So if you tell them Wednesday, then Tuesday you should be ready and have it done. If I think that I'm gonna have a project done on Wednesday, then I'm telling the client it's gonna be Friday. 
things happen, life happens, situations happen. Give yourself a little bit of breathing room, that's okay. People are expecting things right away, that's not your problem. A lack of planning on somebody else's part does not constitute an emergency on your part. Let me say that one more time. A lack of planning on your client's part doesn't constitute an emergency on your part. So making sure that you set a deadline that is realistic, look at the workload, slow things down, look at what you have on your plate, and actually schedule it out. Put the different projects on your calendar and estimate, okay, this is gonna take me probably three to four hours. So blocking out maybe five hours on your calendar or six hours to give yourself an even bigger buffer and not loading projects back to back to back. I'm even doing this with meetings and giving myself more time, thanks to one of my mentors, in between meetings so I can deliver a better experience, be more thorough with what I'm doing and slow the process down and offer better quality. This is really important. And then the last one, number five, is a lack of creative control. Again, this kind of goes back to having to defend your work or being disrespected. A lot of the clients want to take control and there's a couple funny videos where the client's like holding the guy's hand and trying to take control of the project. They hired you as the expert for a reason. They should be handing you that creative control. If you don't feel like you have creative control and you feel like you're just a button clicker or a mouse dragger, you need to change that. You need to set the expectation with the client and say, hey, I need to know that you're gonna give me creative control to be able to do what I think is best for you. I'm the expert, this is what I do for a living. If you wanna do this yourself, you can go use Canva, you can go hire somebody on Fiverr and give them a bulleted list of what you want what you want them to do. But if you want somebody that's gonna bring creativity, that's gonna bring the best quality work possible, I need to have some creative control. I understand that you have your inputs, but I need to be able to put in my expertise, my knowledge, and my passion and creativity into this. So those are the five things that I want you to walk away with today, is being able to understand burnout, understanding defending your work, having a, your profession disrespected, and then missing deadlines, and lastly, a lack of creative control. These are all big areas that graphic designers struggle with that you should not have to struggle with. If you set the expectations right, you delegate work, you work great hours, you plan things out, you slow things down a bit, you're gonna find that your life and your profession is very, very enjoyable. So those are the things I wanted to share with you guys. I hope you found them valuable. Thank you guys so much for tuning in again, and as always, keep looking up.